guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Curiosities at the Natural History Museum in London. So behind me is a very important specimen. Now this is Sophie the Stegosaurus. Now Sophie implies that she's a female but we actually don't know the sex of Stegosauruses, this specimen in particular. Now this was a recent find, so this was only found in early 2000s in Wyoming and was only recently acquired by the museum in 2007 by Professor Paul Barrett. Now this wasn't easy to get to the museum. Now this was a year of kind of negotiations and discussions from an international fossil fair to actually agree on a price that very kindly 70 donors chipped in together to get it here to the museum. Now let's talk a little bit about the specimen. So if we start with the skull, you can see it's a very small head for such a large body. And also the teeth are rather small and it, scientists were a bit puzzled on how could a creature like this sustain itself? You know, how could it eat enough food? because stegosauruses, believe it or not, were plant eaters. Now they would, we believe, would eat like ferns and that sort of vegetation, but we're not 100% sure. But they were actually able to do CT analysis of this specimen where we were able to work out just how their jaws worked and what their bites kind of force was and how the muscles use, uh, worked together to actually be quite an efficient jaw, very similar of that of a modern sheep or cow. So if we move along the creature a little bit, we see these 19 bony plates. Now the first thought is these must be a defense mechanism, they must be there to make the creature look bigger because stegosauruses were actually quite thin creatures but from a distance with their, you know, these plates on the back they could look a lot more ferocious and scary. But they're actually, recently scientific studies have thought that they actually might have worked as radiators so this means that they've got blood vessels in them and they would have pulled up that hot blood to the plates so that it actually could have cooled the creature down. So they're a really impressive sight, they of course might have been used to show off to one another as well, a bit like modern birds do, but um, we're actually not 100% sure on what they were used for but definitely the blood vessels in them suggest they were radiators which I think is quite a unique feature. So with most dinosaurs, it's actually very difficult to identify the males from the females. So unless we find the presence of eggs within the bones or a special kind of bone tissue that would be forming while the animal is preparing to lay eggs, we can't guarantee that that specimen would, would have been female. And the same goes if we don't find the presence of eggs or this special bone tissue, we can't guarantee that the creature is male because it could just be not in the process of laying eggs or not preparing to lay eggs. Um, so it's very tricky to actually allocate a gender to them. But the specimen at the History Museum is a Stegosaurus stenops, um, which we can't um, distinguish between male and female. However, there was recent studies done on Stegosaurus majosi where they identified differences in plate shape. So this could be an example of sexual dimorphism, where the females might have this more pointed shape and the male this more rounded plate. Um, now this, they found lots of examples where these are the two sh uh, plate shapes, so it could be an example of this, and this is a subspecies of stegosauruses, um, so unfortunately it doesn't spread across all of them, but um, it's quite interesting to see how relationships are being made, and as more fossils are found and more research is done, potentially this will become more concrete and more concluded, but I just thought it's quite interesting to see how, you know, this sexual dimorphism might have worked in these prehistoric creatures. So she was discovered in 2003 in Wyoming by a fossil hunter called Bob Simon and it wasn't until 2007 that the professor Paul Barrett, who is the dino expert here at the museum, found her at the International Fossil Fair and started the process to get her moved to the museum so we can enjoy her beauty for all these years to come. So usually with stegosaurus specimens, and most dinosaurs for that fact, they're incomplete skeletons, but this is a pretty much complete skeleton of a stegosaurus. And it's not just complete, it's also in three dimensions. So usually in the fossilization process, the fossils get crushed because the creatures will come to the floor, sediment will lay on top, pressure over the fossilization process will cause them to crush or at least uh, become flatter than they once were. This specimen here is in three dimensions, so it is amazing for scientific studies. So Sophie's skeleton is made up of 360 bones and we can actually see them all laid out here. So before it got put up on its amazing structure and stage that you see at the History Museum, it came almost flat packed like this if you like. So these are three dimensional bones but they had to be very carefully pieced back together to put it in the original stance that she, he would have been in. Um, so you can see here like all the pieces and it's a very kind of complicated jigsaw in my opinion. And the interesting thing is if you look at the skull here, it's made up of individual pieces rather than them all being fused together. So it means for scientists, they can really study the way that the, her skull or his skull would have been moving and eating. And we can learn a lot about this and the teeth of um, how they, you know, could consume enough food to actually 
fuel that body and that's how we were able to make the relationships between modern day sheep and cows and that they would have just been kind of very consistent grazers if you like. So let's talk a little bit now about how stegosauruses move. So there's still a lot to be learned about this, but if we look, you can see that the front limbs are shorter than the back limbs. Now this means that even though this dinosaur looks like it could be very ferocious because of those plates on its back, it was actually very slow moving and probably couldn't run very fast. So we could compare it to the walking speed of a modern rhino or elephant to put it in perspective. It would use all four of its limbs, but it was mainly a very slow moving kind of, its limbs were just all there for balance rather than speed. <laughs> So here we have amazing reconstruction of Sophie's actual skeleton and how she would have moved about. And so we can do this because her bones are in such amazing condition. And it really gives you an idea on how Stegosaurus is moved around on all four limbs. Now Sophie's actually fairly on the small side of Stegosaurus. So she was a young adult when she died and measures in at 5.6 meters long and around 2.9 meters tall. Now this is small for her species. So Stegosaurus stenops would get to around nine meters long, which is pretty humongous, but you can see they were fairly slow movers and they could pick up the pace a little bit, but prefer to kind of be a more casual pace looking at their skeleton. So that's all we've got for you guys today in today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed learning about Sophie the Stegosaurus and hopefully one day you'll have the chance to visit her. But like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll be back with more next week. So comment down below if there's anything in particular you'd like to see and I'll see if I can make it happen. Thanks for watching.